In ASP.NET Core, there are many ways that we can set up dependency injection. Personally, one of my favorite ways is to use a NuGet package that's called Autofac. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. I've made other videos about working with Autofac and written articles about this as well, especially in ASP.NET Core. In one of my last videos, which I'll link up here, I was walking through the recommended way to set up Autofac in ASP.NET Core. Going through that process, there are a handful of things that work really well and a couple of things that don't work so well. So I wanted to continue to explore different ways that we can set up Autofac. And in this particular video, I'm going to walk through just setting up a container builder and not setting things up through the I service collection. A quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and check out that pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. With that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio and look at Autofac. So I did mention that we're not going to be using the iService collection to wire up our dependencies, and instead we're just going to start with the container builder that Autofac has. What I really like about this approach, if we look at the all the code that's above line 20, we can see basically this, because the rest is just comments and some using statements. This essentially just becomes your program.cs. It's extremely lightweight. On line 13, this might change a little bit depending on where you want to register modules from, we can do assembly scanning and stuff like that. So you don't have to register them all individually. So this line could change maybe into two or three more lines. But other than that, it's really lightweight. And I love this kind of thing just to keep it super simple. It essentially means that we should never have to come back to program.cs as we scale out our application. So one code file that basically never has to change is a thumbs up for me. Now with this approach, we end up having all of our registrations inside of this my module class. And like I said, this could look different in your application, but for this example, I'm gonna show you it all in this one module. And modules are things in Autofac where you can set up all of your registrations if you're not familiar with it. And I am going to be walking through what should be very similar to the sample weather application when you go make an ASP.NET Core app. This isn't something I've gone and created from scratch. I've just modified it. So it should look very similar, especially if you want to, on your own, go through this code, which I will link in the description below, and you can set up a new project with the weather application and compare them side by side. So this internal record is just from that sample application, but this my module class is where we start to have our own registrations. But I will do a quick scroll through this because we'll start to see these familiar dependencies if you've gone and watched that previous video. But you can see right here, this is where we start to register our, well, our single minimal API for weather forecast. And this is where I have done some modifications to that API to prove what we can and cannot do. So the comparison that I was trying to do in the previous video was essentially that I want to pass in things on the minimal API and see if we can get dependency resolution to be able to find these services from our dependency container. And if we go look at these dependencies, I have them defined below here, you can see that they are going to take in other dependencies. So I want to see if we can access the web application builder sort of auto magically through the container resolution. The dependency B here takes in the weather application. So this is the instance that gets built from this one here on line 129. And I configuration is accessible from web application builder. But these three dependencies, right? These ones here, like on the parameters that are passing on the constructors, these are ones when I go to build plugin frameworks, I like having access to these things. So for me, this is sort of a minimum bar that I want to be able to set for myself. Between those three things and being able to set up minimal APIs and have that passed in, I think that that's a bar that I want to set for moving forward. If I scroll back up to the other resolutions, because I did skim over these, these are just the three dependencies that we just looked at. And then what we want to be able to do is register the builder itself on the container. So we should be able to automatically resolve that. The I configuration that comes off of that web application builder. And I did a similar thing in the previous video where I did have this web application builder being resolved off the context. In that video, I did not have to have this resolution because I had access to the web application builder already. In this setup, we don't have access to it unless we resolve it off of the container. But between these two things, we should be registering two of the dependencies that we need for these three dependencies, but we're still missing one of them. We are still missing registering the web application itself. But if we scroll through and look at this other registration here, we don't end up needing to add the web application onto the container itself, right? So we don't need to do that in order to register the route. But if we go run this, we will see that there is one problem. 
Because we set it up this way, where we are resolving the builder, then building the app, and then never putting the app onto the container builder itself, what ends up happening is that we should not be able to get this dependency resolved, dependency B. And that's because it truly does need the web application on the container. So let me go run this and we'll see that this minimal API is not going to work. But wait a minute, it's not complaining about dependency B. In fact, in the previous video, we saw that this was the first limitation where dependency B wasn't working because of the web application. But why is dependency A not working in this case? The very first dependency on the minimal API doesn't work for us. Well, let's go back to the code and have a look here. One of the things that's challenging here is that we set all of this stuff up with Autofact, but what we didn't do explicitly was set up the application itself to have dependency injection with Autofact. That's what the previous video did. We used the Autofact service provider to be able to configure the application for that. In this video, we did no such thing. So all of the dependency resolution that's happened up until this point has not had to use that. And in fact, this application is still going to be using the default iService collection. That means that anything we want to go resolve automatically using the application is not going to be using Autofact whatsoever. Now, if I go expand this comment, I've kind of made note of it here. So if you want to pause the video, you can read what I've said, but I'll just summarize it very briefly. If we want to be able to access these dependencies, what we are unable to do is pass them in as the minimal API parameters. We can go ahead and resolve them ahead of time, right in this bit of code here, right? So I could go on comment this, we could go have that run, but we have to go do that ahead of time, have access to them and then get rid of them off of these parameters here. So doing this approach, we cannot resolve dependencies automatically on the minimal API itself. That is one drawback. But let's look at a way that we can work around this, right? So I mentioned that we could go ahead and we could resolve the parameters ahead of time. So that's one way, but something else we can do. If I scroll down, I have some code commented. What we could do is go move that route registration essentially into a dedicated class. And I guess this is really not the registration. This is strictly just defining the method, right? So we have a class that can take in the dependencies, right? Cause we can go put this on our dependency container and Autofact will automatically go inject these dependencies. So that will work great. Dependency B still won't work for us in this setup. And that's because dependency B still relies on the web application. That is going to be a limitation with this approach as well. The whole way through, we are unable to put the web application onto the container itself. Therefore, we can never go resolve it. I just wanted to leave it commented out and re-highlight that in this approach and the approach in the previous video, we are unable to get web application onto the container. These other two dependencies though, we certainly can get to work. Then what we do is we expose this forecast method, which is really just the body of that minimal API. And then we go back up and I can show you how we go register this. So the first part of the registration is that we're going to resolve the actual class that we wanted to create, right? The one we just looked at. And then I can use app map get make a new route or replace the one, obviously, if we don't want to use the normal weather forecast that's broken. And then we just pass in the method. You can see that on the minimal API itself, we don't have to go resolve any dependencies off of the applications container. We have them on our own coming from this context. This should go work totally fine. But the last piece that's missing for that is that we have to go register the weather forecast routes class because we need to do that in order to resolve it up here. So these pieces together, if I go run this, the first route is going to fail, but if we go to two, it should pass. So there's the first route failing. This is totally expected because we didn't change anything for the first route. But if we go to the second one, you can see very clearly that this one succeeds. If we make a little adjustment and we move away from having data passed in on the minimal APIs that needs to be resolved from the container of the application itself, we can go clean this up and potentially just go move all of our routes, our minimal APIs, define those in dedicated classes. This might even be easier to test. So maybe not such a big drawback, but it does mean that your minimal API definition kind of changes from this nice syntax that you would otherwise have and define them right in line. Now, one of the drawbacks of this approach is still that because we don't have the web application on the container itself, right? We're limited in terms of what we can do if we're trying to think about building plugins. If 
I'm building applications and I want to build plugins that can go register their routes onto the application, I can't really do too much because those plugins can't see this application. But now that we've seen two different approaches to setting up these dependencies, there is a little bit of a pattern that's creeping up and maybe we can just flip things on their head. This is covered more in the blog article that I mentioned I linked in the description and I'll have it in the comments as well, but let's go have a look at what we can do because what we're seeing here, right, is that we're able to go pull in dependencies so we can go resolve anything that's registered that we want and then from there, this part is now responsible for adding in the route. Usually what I would like to do is push this kind of behavior into the plugins themselves. They can say, I want to go register this particular route. Here is how I want to go register it. But we can make a little variation of this. So let me comment out this part that does this route registration. But I want to, like I said, flip this on its head. What if instead of just pulling in this single class, we ended up pulling in all of the classes that met a certain implementation. And then instead of saying, let me go explicitly in this registration, go set up all of our routes, I just ask those individual implementations, hey, here's the application. I have access to it. Now you can too. So I'm not passing it in via the constructor in Autofac with dependency injection. Instead, I'm just going to pass it as a parameter. Let's go see how this can work. What I'm doing here is I'm introducing an interface that's called iRegisterRoutes, and you'll see that it just takes in the web application itself. If we go a little bit lower, we'll see that this is a dedicated class that all it's going to do is wire up the routes that we need. So it will be able to go resolve the dependency that we already created and registered. And then it has a register routes method from the interface. And it has that one line that we were talking about doing. It's a dedicated class that can do the registration. If you think about a plugin approach, what we could do is as long as the plugins implemented this interface, they could have their own registrars that essentially allow us to wire things up. That means that these don't have to take in the web application on the constructor. You'll see it's not here, but it can take it in on the method call. One more thing that we'll have to do is of course, register that dependency, right? So if you were thinking about a plugin system, these are two things that in the module for the plugin, you would be able to have essentially get registered and taken care of in the module itself. So these would be pulled out into some other project, some other assembly to go register things. Then what we need to do is in fact, go perform the registration. So instead of the one liner that we have on line 100, we end up having these four lines here in the for each loop. And it just calls on the registrar, the register routes method. Let's go run this and see if it works. So this is the normal forecast route. We didn't change this one, still broken as expected. But when I go to two, we can see that now this is using that other more dynamic approach for registration. This is getting really cool because we're getting much closer to having a plugin system. We've looked at two different approaches so far. The first one being the recommended approach. If you're setting up Autofac with ASP.NET Core, we can access the web application. In the second approach I did, we just started with the container builder and we're not using the recommended approach for setting up dependency injection on the application itself. However, we do get some benefits and some trade-offs when we're doing this in either case. Both of these are limited by the fact we cannot access the web application within the Autofac dependency container. And that's okay because we just saw that we can maybe flip things on their head to reorder how the registration should work for routes. And I am hyper-focused on routes in this case because if we are building ASP.NET Core apps and we want to work towards plugins, registering routes is a pretty big deal. But what if there was yet another way that we could go explore? What if we could get the web application itself onto the dependency container? What if we could use the recommended approach and still make that happen and get us one step closer to plugins, maybe without even having to do what we just saw where we pass the web application in on the method call instead of the constructor. Well, if you're interested in seeing that and working closer towards plugins, you can check out this video next when it's ready. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.